Hello friends, good morning and welcome back to the discussion in human anatomy. Uh, in the last session we were able to finish uh, the major uh, topics of the head and neck and now today we will start fresh with the neuroanatomy portion. Uh, <clears throat> in the neuroanatomy we will start with the brain vesicles. So let us start neuroanatomy and we will start with the brain vesicles. Uh, in the previous discussion when we talked about the uh, 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 cranial nerve nuclei, <coughs> we started with the, uh, the neural tube, how it was divided by the sulcus limitans into the basal plate and LR plate. Similarly, uh, now we will talk about the neuroanatomy portion and we will start again from that same neural tube, but this time we are looking at the more cranial end of the neural tube. So let us say we have these primary brain vesicles here, that is Let us say these are the three primary brain vesicles that is prosencephalon, mesencephalon and rhombencephalon. Now these are the primary brain vesicles, you are looking at the cranial end of the neural tube which is forming these three dilatations which are called as the prosencephalon, mesencephalon and rhombencephalon. In the further division, in the formation of the secondary brain vesicles, this prosencephalon will divide into, this prosencephalon will further divide it into the telencephalon and diencephalon. So these are the two further divisions of the prosencephalon. Let me use different color for the mesencephalon, that is a mesencephalon here, unchanged. And rhombencephalon further dividing into 2. Now this subdivision of the prosencephalon is called as telencephalon. This one is the diencephalon. The telencephalon, the diencephalon, no further subdivisions of the mesencephalon. So, as I said, it will stay as mesencephalon only. And rhombencephalon is dividing into the metencephalon and myelencephalon. Telen, dian, meson, meton, myelencephalon. So these are the further subdivisions of the primary brain vesicles. <coughs> Now, after these uh, the secondary brain vesicles are formed, now what will be derived from the telencephalon and the mesencephalon? You get a question on all these. Like the telencephalon portion will give rise to the cerebrum, and corpus striatum. It gives rise to the cerebrum and corpus striatum. The diencephalon will form all kind of you know, thalamus, the thalamus, hypothalamus, metathalamus. So the diencephalon will give rise to the thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, metathalamus, epithalamus. And the two things which are considered as the extension of the diencephalon, that one is neurohypophysis, the posterior lobe of the pituitary, the neurohypophysis an optic stalk, the one which will give rise to the optic nerve. So, neurohypophysis and optic stalk. So, these are the major derivatives of the diencephalon, the thalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus, metathalamus, epithalamus, neurohypophysis, the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland and optic stalk. Mesencephalon, metencephalon and myelencephalon, 
the three parts of the brain stem the mesencephalon will give rise to the midbrain meten to the pons and myelencephalon to the medulla oblongata pons midbrain pons and medulla oblongata now if you look at the cerebellum guys what is the location of cerebellum um, if this is a brain stem here we have a midbrain pons and medulla where exactly is the cerebellum cerebellum is mostly behind the pons if not completely it is mostly behind the pons and pons is derived from metencephalon so metencephalon will give rise to pons and cerebellum it will give rise to pons and cerebellum so these are the derivatives of the secondary brain vesicles now the spaces which are present inside the spaces inside this uh, neural tube or the cranial end of the neural tube will form the ventricles so if i say what is which cavity will give rise to the lateral ventricle the cavity of the telencephalon will give rise to the lateral ventricle cerebrum is formed by the telencephalon lateral ventricle is present within the cerebrum so obviously the cavity of the telencephalon will form the lateral ventricle what is the location of the third ventricle guys third ventricle is present mainly between the two thalamus the thalamus is derived from the diencephalon so cavity of the diencephalon will give rise to third ventricle so lateral ventricle cavity of telencephalon third ventricle cavity of diencephalon where is the fourth ventricle in gross anatomy what is the location for the fourth ventricle the fourth ventricle is present between the pons and cerebellum mainly between the pons and cerebellum so pons and cerebellum they are both derived from the metencephalon so the cavity of metencephalon will give rise to the fourth ventricle so lateral ventricle cavity of telencephalon third ventricle cavity of diencephalon and fourth ventricle is the cavity of metencephalon what connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle third and fourth ventricle are connected to each other by cerebral aqueduct so guys cavity of the mesencephalon will give rise to the cerebral aqueduct i'm making a star here this is nothing but the aqueduct of sylvus or cerebral aqueduct cerebral aqueduct is nothing but the cavity of <coughs> mesencephalon in the midbrain we have the cerebral aqueduct so it's a cavity of mesencephalon which forms the cerebral aqueduct so this is about the derivatives of the <coughs> the brain vesicles the primary converted into secondary brain vesicle the secondary brain vesicle gave rise to all these structures and the cavity inside formed the ventricular system the third ventricle the fourth ventricle the lateral and the cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of sylvus